You are listening to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast with Chris and Garrett. Hello, and welcome to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast with Chris and Garrett. Episode 11, 12th grade night. I'm Chris, and in this episode, Garrett and I go back to 1985 to revisit the gender-bending teen comedy, Just One of the Guys, with Joyce Heiser, Billy Zabka, Clayton Rohner, Sherilyn Finn, and Deborah Goodrich-Royce. Garrett and I had the privilege of interviewing Deborah this week for a special bonus episode, so be sure to check that out. Just One of the Guys takes a lot of its cues from William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, which was also a gender-bending comedy of sorts. It also set the stage for future movies that were also inspired by classic literature, such as She's the Man with Amanda Bynes, also based on Twelfth Night, Ten Things I Hate About You, which was based on Taming of the Shrew, and Clueless, which was based on Jane Austen's Emma. If you don't own a copy of Just One of the Guys, it is available for rent or purchase online. Whether you download it, stream it, or pop a disc in your DVD player, we invite you to watch the movie with us as you listen to our commentary of Just One of the Guys. it for a commentary but um i hadn't seen it in so long i decided to watch it again earlier uh well actually last week and uh first of all it goes by really fast uh it's it's a what's the word it's a breezy film it goes by quickly um but what i touched on in the interview with deborah was just such a sense of chemistry between the cast not just the leads, but like everybody, even the smaller parts, the part uh, actors and, you know, Deborah mentioned like Ari Gross and, um, you know, and some of the other folks in the cast, like there's just a really strong sense of chemistry amongst all of them. You really get a sense that they enjoyed working with each other. Um, I, I think when, you know, when they when we talked about that, they, they rehearsed, they rehearsed in the space that they filmed, but they, but not only did they, but they rehearsed the movie and then they filmed the movie. But, you know, but you think about, you know, like John Hughes did that with the breakfast club yeah. and think about how, and think about how well that worked out for them. Yeah. Um, they did that with karate kid, which, you know, Columbia's did them by a year before this movie, yeah. but like, but like John Aviston did the same thing. He, he rehearsed the scenes and tried to, and I could tell from the videos that he tried to do it in the same spots mm-hmm. that they were going to film, and it's like, and you could tell that with just how, even though people, you know, you know, love to talk about Daniel and Johnny, whatever, but like Ralph Macchio and William Zabka have been really good friends all these years. They've been really close, and if you, and if you ever listen to an interview with them off, you know, you know, like not, not per se Cobra Kai, but they are really, you know, like they're really tight, and it's like they are really. And they like and you could tell they enjoy each other and their company and they get along really well and they are really good friends. And 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 I think that goes back to you know to the environment that the director sets. And you got to give credit to the director here for doing that. And I think I think the cast did that. But and, and you could tell that happened with Karate Kid, even though that's a you know, you have bullies and you had you know rivals and all this kind of stuff, but it's like, but it but the cast, I mean, you could tell these guys like all the pictures that you see, all the all the candid pictures off off the thing. You see, right? You, you know, like you remember seeing, um, you know, uh, you know, Pat Morita with all the Cobra Kai guys, yeah. All you know, all all you know, all you know, all together and whatever. It's like the respect that like Martin Cove has for Pat Morita is is unparalleled. I mean, he talks like you know, he treats him like a legend, which he is a legend. But he he with such respect when Martin Cove talks about, and I think I think we see that with. You know, with this cast, mm-hmm. just what you just, just what you just got through saying, they really liked each other. You know, it's like there's a there's a there's a a camaraderie there that's just that's that's a bond that's you can tell it's pretty strong even well, to this day. The 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 technique of uh, what these directors did in doing the rehearsals before actual filming, I know back in the day 
a lot of it was because the film directors had started work in on the stage. They they had directed plays or musicals, which obviously goes through a lot of rehearsals. And some of these directors, um, it's interesting because sometimes you'll you'll I come across interviews or I'll hear where actors either complain or they want rehearsal. It's always like a either or, like some actors don't want rehearsal. They want the spontaneity of getting in front of the camera and seeing what happens. But then there are some actors who really like the rehearsal process. They like, and some of those folks come from a stage background. And I think, you know, you talked about John Avelson and, and what he did in the rehearsing of Karate Kid and filming it on video. I, I've always, and maybe it's because I, I did a little bit of work in theater, I, I see the value of rehearsals uh, because it, for all the talk that actors say, but I don't want to do rehearsals, I want the spontaneity of getting in front of the camera for the first time. And, you know, well, my counter argument to that is you can do that as well. It doesn't matter, you know, doing the rehearsal, like really getting a sense of what, it's not like it's going to become rote or stilted. It's like the more you rehearse something, the more you do discover those kind of spontaneous, spontaneous, excuse me, spontaneous things that when you're filming, you may have been doing it one way during the rehearsals, but something happens and you're like, you know, it changes. Yep. And the directors usually anticipate that. You know, they understand, I think, even better than the actors sometimes that rehearsal is a great way to mine those things that you wouldn't normally get if you didn't rehearse. So, um, but to, to, your, to what we've been talking about, I think rehearsal also builds a much closer knit cast. And so when I think about these movies that had rehearsals, Karate Kid, just one of the guys, and there's, there's countless others, Maybe not all the time, but usually I think you wind up with a cast that feels much more integrated. So certainly on Karate Kid, like everyone in that movie, even the smallest roles felt connected to the bigger story. And that's why I think when we, we talk about these movies, just one of the guys is another example. There's a lot of small roles in the movie but they all feel part of a larger picture. Whereas some movies, when you don't have that, things can feel disjointed. It feels like these characters don't fit in this movie or these scenes don't really seem to fit with the rest of the movie or you know, things like that. And so I think there's definitely value in, in these approaches. And I think it also increase, it speaks to the longevity. When something has been rehearsed and practiced and you know, you figure out what's working and what isn't, and then you shoot what's working, you wind up with a movie that's going to last a lot longer than some of these other films that don't do that approach. So, um, so yeah, I, uh, I have to say, you know, we've watched a couple of movies so far in our series where I hadn't seen them in a long while, but I had these like memories, like these positive memories. And then we watch them and it's like, these don't really hold up as well, but I have to say, having watched this one recently, I'm actually looking forward to watching it again tonight. One, because you and I get to watch it together and we get to talk about it, but also because it's it's a fun movie. It's It's got some really funny moments in it, and as many times as I've seen it, and I know you've seen it probably just as many times, I think I told you this earlier today, there's a part in the movie that actually made me laugh out loud. Now, I I will laugh at comedies, but if it's something I've seen a lot, I don't usually yeah. laugh out loud, but this one chuckle maybe. Yeah, this one caught me by surprise, and uh, you know, but I think there's some really funny lines in this movie, and I think the cast does a good job in delivering them. And I'm just going to go ahead and st state this, say this right off the bat, because I know I'm probably going to say it several times throughout the movie, but Joyce Heiser and Deborah Goodrich are so adorable in this movie. Uh, and then also the actress that plays um, Terry's best friend, Tony Hudson, Denise. She uh, was on TV shows as well. And she was on one of our favorite TV shows from the 80s, Greatest American Hero. She had a guest appearance on that show, as well as Knight Rider in the A-Team. So she was yeah. T.J. Hooker. She was like 18, T.J. Hooker, Knight Rider, Greatest American Hero, and The Love Boat. So, oh. 
Gotta love that. She's, she's rocking it. She's definitely rocking it. Um, so, my, those, are, those are like my, those are my TV choices. All of those, I would have been like, yes, yes, yes. You know, and the other thing, I don't want to give too much away from the interview. I don't want to spoil it because it, it is, it certainly deserves to be listened to in its an entirety because Deborah is just awesome, as we've said several times already. Yeah. Um, but we talked about the costume design in the movie and and I didn't quite say this in, in the interview, so I'm going to say it here. This movie, to me, nailed the look, especially for the girls, in terms of the fashion. I, I was going to say to Deborah that I knew girls in high school who dressed just like Deborah. I knew girls that dressed just like Denise. Um, not so much, not so much with Terry, both the female Terry and the male Terry, but uh, yeah, Elvis Costello, Ralph Macchio look. No, yeah, no. there were not, there were a few guys at Northern who attempted that, but not as successfully, I would say. But Denise, her her like sweaters, and then um, Deborah and her like dresses, you know, her like skirts, yeah. those tube skirts or whatever they call them. Um, yeah, there were so many girls I went to high school with who wore that kind of stuff. And so it was like, man, they nailed it right there, you know. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, but anyway. I'm and just and, and, and I, I know I heard her talk about in one of the cast things that yeah. uh, I think it was at the 30th thing they did. Uh-huh. But she said, she, she, goes, she goes, I don't know why they gave me curly hair. But it's like that was right at the beginning of like there was a ton of girls who Ooh, got absolutely. the perm, perms were just like totally. hot stuff. And, um, you know, and, and she talked about how she's, you know, her hair is naturally straight. But it's like, right. but there was, but that was like right at 85. And that yeah. probably from that point on, like they, like I said, they got that, they got that perfectly right at the right time. And that, it, yeah. that photo, I think we talked about this earlier. Uh, but that photo, the publicity photo of her and Billy Zabka, you know, kind of, there's just the two of them um, where he's kind of got his arms around her or whatever. Honest to goodness, like you could have taken her photo, taken her in that photo and put it in a Northern yearbook from 1985, 86, 87, 88. And it would have, you would have never known. You would have thought she was another student there. So um, yep. Yeah, so yep. really, I you know, I need to look up who did the costume design because they they definitely, in fact, let me do it right now. Linda Matthews. Wardrobe, bro, yeah. Linda Matthews. Oh, wow. Yeah, Linda Matthews. So, yep. so Linda, man, she's got quite a career. She the she did Captain Marvel. Um, War Games. Yeah. She. Um, Blade Runner. And Captain, yeah, and Jurassic World. And I mean, so she's been around. Yeah, doing from War Games to so, all the in, in Blade Runner, all the way to Captain Marvel and Jurassic World. The Counting, I mean, with you know, that's with Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah. The that's Girl great. with the Dragon Tattoo, The Dark Knight. She's got a track record here. She doesn't need any recognition. I mean, her track record is recognition recognition enough. I mean, these are some pretty impressive credits, but um, I, you know, just I think. She really did a great job on on this particular movie. Just one of the guys. So, um, is there anything else we want to say about the movie before we jump in? No, I, I say let's get let's get this thing rolling. Let's go. Okay. I'm right. excited about I'm excited about watching it. Yeah. So let me pull up mine. The Columbia Pictures logo has faded to black. We haven't gotten to the movie yet, so we're somewhere in that that black area. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll count us down. so I'll count us down. So grab mm-hmm. your copy of just one of the guys, get it to this point so you can watch along with us. Counting down from three, two, one, play. And there's Joyce's legs. Columbia Pictures. Columbia Pictures present. Okay, good. All right. And as I said earlier, um, Joyce Heiser is so beautiful in this movie. She's just a and funny. I think I had an alarm clock like that. (laughs) Joyce Heiser. Good morning, world. 
but uh, no, that's not the lady we talked to. Billy Jane, um, Billy Jacoby here. He changed. Yeah, his but Billy Jane now. Yeah, yeah. Billy Jane now. Billy Zapka. William Zapka. Yay, Johnny. And this uh, this soundtrack was a. Uh, they had some fairly big names on the soundtrack. This is Midnight Star singing. Sherilyn Finn. Yeah, but good rich. That's just, there she is, her name. Yeah. Kenneth Tiger is the actor who plays the journalism teacher. He's been in almost everything. Uh, really good actor. Sweet ride. That dude I recognize. He was in a lot of stuff. He was on Dallas, dude. Yes, Dallas. That's what it was. He was, uh, what's her face? Is uh, the little girl, the little, I mean, Oh, uh, Lucy? Uh, Lucy's husband. Yeah. Yep. That's who he was. Yep, that's right. He's into some so some wild stuff. He does a lot of, like, he's very cerebral and yeah, does a lot of uh, art stuff and has a lot of gatherings at his house. I've, I've looked at him a little bit. He's got a, he's he's an interesting fella for sure. Does some art, art, artistic stuff. Yeah. So this school was a closed down school in uh, Arizona and they I heard the director talk about it. they took over the school and kind of like they had their offices they did their production office was in there there's a scene with the cave and the cave was built with inside the school with kind oh, of like, wow. almost like almost almost like John Hughes did with the yeah. building the library set of, in the gym as Denise this yeah. is the outfit I was talking about I knew girls who dressed like this the sweater with the color, primary colors. I do wonder, I know they shot this in chronological order, apparently, but I do wonder if Joyce had already cut her hair in this wig. Right, yes. Like, there was, that, was there ever times where she had to go back and wear a wig, if, or did they, what was, yeah, because that almost looks like a, it's like it could be a wig or it could just be that yeah. your hair is, you know, 80s perm. Teased. Yep. Yeah, teased out. It just looks a little bit, I don't know. In my mind, I think that I did. Okay, my snack tonight is Junior Mints, by the way. Uh, my snack tonight is just Dr. Pepper Zero. I... I did not get my mess together and go get snacks. Well, after last time you had, you brought about four snacks. Yeah, I need to take it easy this time, I think. <laughs> There's Ken Tiger. Yeah, great actor. These extras must be high school students. They all look like high school students from the 80s. You may remember him most recently. He was the old gentleman who stood up to Loki in the first Avengers when he was making everybody bow. Oh, he, yeah. That is, I says, do remember that. Yeah, that's Ken Tiger. I see that. I see the face. I recognize him. Yes. You're my density. losers this was some popular uh ice cream place that they it was came from california and but it didn't it didn't do well in arizona i think it, i think it closed down after too long after this i just looked up some of the locations yeah of course they are <laughs> it's, it's like the teen fantasy the parents are gone for two weeks two weeks I do think that having parents around would have been a fun complication. Today. Yeah. 
He's such a horn dog. This kid is like he's oversexed. But think about like <laughs> Zaps and Mischief yep. and yep. Porkies. I mean, that was just like this was kind of yeah. like a yeah horn dog cinema. Right. It was just kind of like it was my tutor. I mean, there's a ton of them. And I, and I think he really was 15 when this movie was filmed. So he was like the youngest cast member. Yeah. <laughs> Guess James. So I read this. I have not freeze framed the the photo or the the shot of the the papers that were there in the trophy case. But apparently, there's a typo in the one on the left. <laughs> they uh, put the word therefore without an H, so it said tear for. That's. That's not too creepy. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Yeah, Mr. Raymaker, you perv. So one of the writers on this movie um, is uh, Jeff Franklin, which I don't know if you looked this up, but he was the creator of Full House. And one of the other writers, Dennis Feldman, or maybe it was he was one of the writers, I think, or at least he's credited as one of the writers. Uh, he was involved in the Species uh, movies with Natasha Henstridge. Like drama. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh, how many? I didn't catch which comic book that was. Did you? I could tell. I looked for a second like a Spider Man, but I couldn't. I was.
Oh, he's he would be a great like Blaine, uh, not Blaine, but what was what was uh what was Blaine's friend's name in Oh Pretty and Pink? James Spader's character. Yep. Yep. Uh, I can't. He'd be of. great. I mean. Steph, and he is yes. such a Steph character. Yes, totally. Or a Biff, you know, or a you know, Buffy and Biff, you know, that kind of. <laughs> soundtrack that is a very 80s look that she's wearing as well yep You know, Carlton is lowest. Yeah. Look at the lowest tar, man. Yep. <laughs> the eye roll. Yep. Waka waka waka. <laughs> that hat. I know that is a that's another eighties. I think I had a hat like that. It didn't have the stuff in the back. But yeah, there's a lot of paint, those painter caps painter that were popular. That's what they were. Yep, yeah. I had one of those. Like the Burt Surf Shop was huge for Mine a while. Was Panama Jack, I think. And of course, that was huge. Yep. Yeah. This is one of my favorite scenes in this movie. The two of them doing this whole. I may have missed it, but apparently a, there's a Bruce Springsteen poster in Terry's room. Joyce, I think there's multiple. I think there's multiple Spring Bruce Springsteen. Joyce, Joyce David Bruce. I heard that. Yes, yeah. several years. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, how Buddy's dressed is kind of a 
80s Bruce Springsteen style. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Words to live by. Dig. All balls itch. It's a fact. That's right. Fact. They got him to say that at the 30th anniversary showing thing. Yeah. He said, all balls itch. It's a fact. It's the truth, man. Universal truth. But she worked with an actor for like a, like a male actor for like a week just on like how to how to carry yourself like I mean, like the stuff they're going over here but she actually worked she actually works on on her guy terry look and the way she held herself and she did have a body cast on her when she was doing her guy scenes. Yeah. You know, she does, it, again, it's like, she does a good job. I mean, she really... Here's Ralph Macchio. I mean... She pulls Terry. it off. She totally does. She so, yeah, it's like, on that tri trivia thing, it's like, that's what they were, they were going for the look of, that she kind of looked like Ralph Macchio. It's a very hipster look now. Well, I said something, what's the word? There's a line that she says, like, Elvis Costello or something and yeah. She almost looks like the dude from um who's the who's the weasel guy in uh, Fast Times at Richmond High? Oh uh, Brad. Brad. No, not Brad. The the oh. the guy who was like uh Ram Ramon? Ramon, is that it? I think uh... I don't. Yeah, I think kind of. The guy stole the tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has that kind of look, and there he is. Yep, Billy. Cobra Kai. I mean, yeah. I mean, oh, Cobra Kai in Arizona. It was Mike Damone. Damone, Damone, that's it. Look here, LaRusso. And his gloves. Good. He's putting an arm around his waist, like walking off arm in arm with these clowns. And there's Clayton. You know, his his clothes, I, I mean, I know they kind of portray him as like a fashionless kind of dude, but uh his shirts and everything are. Well, he said that he brought some of his clothes for the thing. And they said, yeah, oh, this would be great for the before, for the before thing. <laughs> he was like, he was like, really? <laughs> he thought his stuff was, I mean, we, we, you know, what you just got through saying, he thought, you know, he, yeah, he thought they were cool too. And they, the clothes he brought for the, or he thought for the role was going to be for his transformation was what they used for the pre transfer. It's too funny. So these two guys were supposed to do like a Star Trek kind of geek thing, and they they were told they couldn't because Columbia didn't. Did do Star Trek? Yeah, um, 
so they had to kind of change up change it up a little bit their their take on up a lower suit and there's coke behind you coke bought columbia by the way that's right during this process this movie being made yep so we shall see some coke products i'm sure coke machines are in the background so apparently there is some in jokes and some of the graffiti on the walls um some jokes about lisa gottlieb the director and joyce um yeah i mean there are, some, there are some moments where it's like she totally looks like a guy Who says she is the Fonz? Says Lisa and Joyce are sluts. <laughs> said on the on the stall wall, it said Lisa and Joyce are sluts. <laughs> <laughs> yep, seniors eighty five. Yep. This poor guy. <laughs> she has bought. Ralph Macchio and having this mess. They kind of gloss over the fact that he just manages to insinuate himself into the school. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, at least at least with uh, when when John Cryer does it, you know, he has at least comes up with a uh, Max Hauser. Maxwell Hauser. Fast lanes at Ridgemont High. Hold it. Ugh. These teachers are just outright creepy. Yeah, I'm like three. I'm having surprise jock inspections. Like, really? Of course, they're of course they're mascots. Go Beavers! <laughs> I just remember when I had gym class. Like I don't recall ever having to wear wear jock straps. It was a kind of a big big deal early, and then it was kind of like. By the time I was in high school, it was like it was not a. I mean, I remember wearing it some and wearing basketball, playing basketball. But like, you know, you would think that's something that from this you think it was a, 
I mean, like, no one wears a jock strap anymore. I mean, maybe some football players do for a cup or something, but. Yeah, that's what I thought. But. I got to give her credit. This is pretty ingenious what she comes up with. Almost like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Only problem is I didn't I didn't have a lighter, so No, that's the one class I wanted to do is, is do class. <laughs> I like You know, once I got to high school, because I was in marching band, I didn't have to take PE because we, I mean, March. we, we marched. I mean, it was pretty, it could be physically grueling. Um, oh yeah. You can't run that equipment and stuff and doing, yeah. And the uniforms you had to wear, those things were hot. And I don't mean like, like sexy hot. I mean like poly yeah, wool. Wool, yeah. uncomfortable. I think I lost like, in the fall, I think I lost like 20 pounds just wearing that thing. Somebody's got a brass guy. He's carrying out his trophy. I had a shirt like that when I was in high school. or well, junior high, but yeah, I had a shirt like that. Sure, because <laughs> Stuart Charno. He he did it. He was in a film with uh, Clayton Roner, uh, 1986, called Modern Girls. <laughs> what are we? So another thing that I thought about, so basically she's skipping school to go to this school. And I guess it's, it is convenient that her parents are out of town for two weeks because I think the, her school that she goes to be like, you know, Terry hasn't been in class for the last two weeks. Thank you. 
Yeah, there's the Springsteen poster right behind. Yep. Oh, it's huge. You know, another thing I always say about Joyce, like in these scenes where she's not Terry the boy, but she's kind of just hanging out, she pulls off the short hair look pretty well. Some girls can't pull it off, but she pulls off the short hair look really well. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of short hair, but I, I agree. She's not, she ain't, she's not. It's a very 80s style for women that kind of short teased hair like that. Yeah, Mr. Bruce. <laughs> Billy Idol over there. Who's Woodward? Who's Bernstein? Yeah, he don't like him either. <laughs> well, there she is. I hear her. Yep. There's the lady. Coke again on the on the I tray. A, I had a shirt and a tie like that in high school. Not the vest though, but I did have a tie so, like that. So were so were you, so were you originally Christine and now you're Chris? What's the deal? It was, it was Chris one of the, K R I S, and then just one of the guys. Just one of the gals. <laughs> <laughs> There's your sequel. Just one of the gals. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Yeah, I'd be like, I'm out. Peace out. Very nice meeting you. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, tell me if you you see this as well. I pick up a very strong John Ritter vibe with Clayton in this movie. John who? John Ritter. Oh. Kind of. Not necessarily in this scene, but a little later. There she is. <laughs> He's a little too... We know Deborah's. <laughs> we know Deborah. Perfection. That's right. There's Sherilyn. There it is. Uh-huh. I'm going to get him. Looks like just like Elvis, Elvis, Elvis Costello. Looks like Karate Kid. <laughs> they throw pussy around like it's like.
Nice mustache, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh god you heard flip-flops walking well, around barefoot in a gym <laughs> hey Tries to walk like like John Travolta or something. Yeah. It's Ronnie Spector on the radio. Who's playing? Ronnie Spector. She's singing to me. Is that a is that a Mustang or is that a Capri? Yeah, I think so. So like Mercury Capris were the version of the same same everything as the Mustang. This is what I'm talking about, John Ritter. Like he just kind of has a. I'm I'm seeing it. I see what you're. It may just be the hair and the. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely the physical yeah. similarities there. So the place they have the prom is like like the first wave pool in America, I think. Oh, really? Yes. So it wasn't on the beach. No, it's like a it's like a water park thing place in Arizona, and it's oh. like their first. It's like yeah, it's like the first one they ever, like the first wave pool I think in I think in the, in the United States. I love that beer. Just what, what do you got there? Beer. It's just beer. Yeah, beer. So, was all of this movie shot in Arizona? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think the whole thing. There's James Brown. Speaking of James Brown, that's a nice little touch there. You want to give the you want to give the background story on that? So apparently, and I, I wasn't able to ask Deborah to confirm this, um, James Brown apparently, according to some of the trivia I found out about this movie, he came to the set and kind of gave Clayton Roner some dance tips so that he could kind of... Don't 
She's got milk and pizza, which I like, but he's got Coke. Milk and pizza? <laughs> but face yeah i could see you calling cc and doing that that would that would go oh. you you if i did that today you, you still wouldn't see me for exactly. several months you have to go in hiding I feel like she should be like on Welcome Welcome Back Carter or something. <laughs> Mr. Carter. Yeah. There she is. Yep. Rocking the 80s look. Rocky Four hadn't come out yet, people. So let's remember that. <laughs> Jeez. Nice. There's Deborah Painter Nails. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. So the very next year, she films, she's in the Wraith, and this and it was filmed in Arizona as well. And I'm talking about Cheryl Lynn Finn, by the way, not.
Yeah, you can't call me. You don't have, we don't have cell phones. So this interior you said was in the school. That's, yeah, they built this inside the school is what I heard the director yeah. say. When you want to, when you want a cheap buzz, drink beer. And a Coke. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I think, I'm trying to remember which song this is. I think this is uh, Lindsey Buckingham. Trouble? Yes, I, I, now I do know he's in this, he's got a song in this film. Yes, that's so. it. Yeah, it's Lindsey Buckingham.
I got my purple pants. I gotta go. I <laughs> vacuumed. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> Billy, don't look up Joyce's skirt. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, buddy. <laughs> Good night, buddy. <laughs> Well, we got more coke there. The one who dresses like Elvis Costello and looks like Ralph Macchio. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Was that some of his actual clothes that he brought? Yeah, I think it's his actual clothes. <laughs> Poor fellow. There she is. Chump stains. You tell him, honey. Well, I get you, LaRusso. Protect protractors on their sh shirts. Okay, I know. I know. In our lunch room, we didn't have all those coke. <laughs> we didn't have coke to drink. It and definitely not.
Such a Johnny move. Allie, come back. I mean, Deborah. Dude, this happened to me one time. I was wearing white and it got all over me. That's why I don't wear white. Right. Uh oh. My uh, Ruby froze. Broads. Yeah, it froze. Yeah, it froze up on me. So I don't know where I'm at in relation to yours because mine froze up only twice. Somebody show me your hairy chest or show me your hairy chest. Yeah, I think I'm um, the message, you. bud. My earbuds have stopped working. Having extreme technical difficulties tonight. But I'll try my alternative audio.
yeah i've lost the audio on the movie like i do like how they change try to change at least billy zapka's hair wasn't totally johnny the johnny look even though he's acting like a yeah What are you going to do? Very 80s hairstyle. Oh, and there goes the fade. Hmm. <laughs> He's like, oh. Oh, then security shows up. She looks great in this movie. somebody who had naturally straight hair I mean the perm definitely works for Deborah there was a girl in my class who dressed a lot like her and I remember she wore something similar to what Deborah wears in this scene and she was like she was like really tan like in this movie. Kristen, what's her name? Um, she's an actress. Dang it, what's her name? Kristen Bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. She looks like, like here, I, I it's like it would be like if Kristen Bell was in 1985, this is what I think she would. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, really, I think if Crystal Bill had a, a perm in 1985, this would be what she would. Yeah. Great guy.
just out of curiosity, what's uh, what's your counter at? One hundred eight ten. Oh, it's by the way, it's okay. I've tried to get it at midnight, but uh, twelve oh eight. So it's midnight, midnight movie snack That's right. podcast time. So, so what's on the screen right now? What are you seeing? Her and her, her and her best friend, or she put on lipstick. Oh, love boat. Yeah, they're playing that same Ronnie Spector song. Yeah, so she had just broke up with our Bruce Springsteen. They dated from, and this Rod Stewart poster, but they dated from 79 to 84. And this had to be filmed in 84. Uh, it's Ernest Hemingway poster on her wall there. Oh. <laughs> I followed you. That's not creepy, is it? Yeah, I have no idea where I am in relation to where you are. Um, he, she's, she's in. Um, they're in uh, the little brother's room. Right. I think I'm close, but I don't know how far off I am. Is she put the fish on the counter yet? think so is buddy yeah she has yeah okay i'll pause for a second well i think you're ahead of me that's what i'm saying if i pause and i you can catch okay. up terry's talking about the, the 
hardcore. Doorbell stuff. ran twice. Okay, she just shut the door. Oh. My pizza. Seven thirty. I'm right on time. The Buddy and Terry have such a good chemistry together. They're really, they're really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Hobby. <laughs> like an important hobby. Come on, buddy.
So was this uh, Wave Park? Was this it? You said this was in, in Arizona? Yep. It's called Big Surf. It's in Tempe. 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 Big, yeah, it's called Big Surf. And suppose and the, the band is uh oh no the ice cream shop was called Leather Bees. They're famous in Sacramento and but they didn't do well in Arizona. And they uh, the thing I read here on Fast Rewind says that um only the prettiest girls were invited to be extras, and the rest of us were told not to show up. That's what somebody wrote in. What? <laughs> There's Deborah. Prom dress. Now, who's that band? I don't know. That I don't, that I don't know. No. <laughs> he's not playing the drums, he's attacking them. What's this dude over there? So basically, they're a band playing at a high school prom. Like, and she's making eyes with the guy, like he's going to take her places. But it's like these are grown men playing in a band for a high school. Right. Prom. Well, judging from your outfit, Planet of Madonna. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he was the, her boyfriend. The her other boyfriend was the he was in Hamburger, the motion picture. That's that's another one in the eighties that I remember. Hamburger, the motion picture. Hey, you like my mullet? Oh, and so this high school was, I don't know which, if it's the, the high school, their, the rival high school with the high school she started out with, but yeah. it's the same high school used in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Ah. It's like the lead singer of Mr. Mister in that outfit. <laughs> Take these broken wings. It's me. I want to recount. 
No, I'm kidding. No recount needed. I love you, Greg. <laughs> Rejection. The new freak. You guys are like Greg. <laughs> what? Passion in paradise. Woo! 85. Gonna put on my gloves and show them my gloves. what they would do in this situation. And she goes on to star with him again in April Fool's Day, correct? That's right. Yeah. So um, one of the extras, one of the girlfriends of uh, one of Greg's friends is, uh, was a Playboy Playmate. Or a Playboy model. Always oh, picking on LaRusso, man. I'd say she was a playmate. Oh, there we go. Some karate kid. Go at him. Yep. Cobra Kai never dies. Okay, so all you unattractive girls, please leave. <laughs> <laughs> Only the pretty girls. Come on, Rick, do the crane kick. Show him how James Brown would fight. The right, we'll get the left, and there's the right. There we go. And ooh. You should have swept the leg. Um since it would be ashamed of him right now. He would be ashamed. He would be kicked out of Cobra Kai. Oh yeah, I see the wave machine, the back of it. Yeah, yeah. it's never noticed that before. He's just a friend, like. Hey, it's 1985. I don't want to get involved in this. <laughs> and here's up, coming up. It they get better. gave this its PG-13 rating. <laughs> no. Cindy Lauper. Yeah, they 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 got on to him about saying her name. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? What? What?
did Shakespeare write that line or was that added? Yeah, I think that was in the first draft of what Shakespeare. <laughs> He was funny. He says that for, that scene was over his head. He goes, he goes, yeah, it's the, we'll do that one again and again and again and again. Where dost thou get off having memory glands? <laughs> That's my transsexual friend. He does have memory glands, forsooth. He's like looking. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> Reptile was like looking, like see if he could get a peek. And I'm also a man. Somebody cross the street playing a saxophone or something. Yeah, I know. Hey, you mind knocking it off? Is that a is that an early Kenny G? Let's, let's see back. Oh. <laughs> the fish girl. She's carrying a shoulder holster. She's packing heat. Royal typewriter. Oh my! That was a long time. His mullet rocks. <laughs> I was thinking about dressing up as a woman. What do you think? What happened to that locker next to her? Um, so, uh, well, they, well, they said it was like these were some old schools that they were closed down already. So I said they didn't put a much lots of asbestos in the ceiling. They they held on to their uh, budget money. Yeah, and it came it came in under budget, so probably for not painting that locker. Yeah, probably. That was, saved, that was the key. Saved a few thousand dollars there. Yep.
And when I see you in Avengers, I'm going to remember you. Don't ever bow to Loki. That's right. Ken Tiger is such a great actor. I, I wish he had had a bigger role in this movie. Like he's, you know, he has just a couple of scenes, but he's really good in it. I think uh, John C. Raleigh must have like based his character as uh, <laughs> of of never being kissed as uh, Drew, Barry, Drew Barrymore's boss. Yeah, I think she must have based it after this guy because it kind of looks like it. it kind of, yeah. A buck's worth back then was probably like half a tank. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. My gosh. It was... Sister of my loins. You would definitely get a full gallon. I mean, yeah. Hey, I'm wearing this shirt you helped me pick out. And the hair's all teased out. Yep. Was this also in Arizona? This scene? This looks like I, a back lot. It does look like a back lot. I'm with you. It does. <laughs> what in the world? I it just <laughs> Buddy was never seen again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like I don't. And that was just one of the guys. Yep. You're right. It, uh, it went by yeah. by really quick. Yes. Is, it, is, it, is that short of a movie or does it just feel that way? I think it's a combination of the two. It's it's a little over 90 minutes. Um, but it goes by quickly. Uh it makes me wonder and if I had really given it some thought, I might have asked Deborah this when we interviewed her. Um, if there was, if there were scenes that were shot but cut from the movie. Oh, that was a good. Well, I was. That's a good. That's a great question. May have to. I may have to. We may have to, may have to send her an email and ask. It's just ask a couple of questions. Not like I don't want to. I know she's busy with other stuff and she's promoting her book and. Um, I don't. Well, she's maybe, already been gracious enough but when we do uh, maybe we can ask her a, a couple day. questions about we can wait wait on it until april fool's day and she's coming out with a new book we can kind of knock it all out in one fell swoop like hey by the way when we interviewed you back during just one of the guys said this movie came under budget um i think yeah. it's because they they didn't spend a whole lot on the credits <laughs> these are these that are, either yeah these, these are this and the title credits if you remember the title credits they're using some font that i was like Whoa. well let's go back to okay this is this is what i've heard her say so like when the movie was first i guess green lighted that coke didn't coke coke had not bought columbia yet right but then but once production had started maybe i maybe did rehearsal whatever coke had bought and so bought them out and then so a bunch of people got fired and 
let go and all this kind of stuff happened. They were changing. And so like, there, I think there are people who were, yeah, trouble written by Lindsay Buckingham. There it is. Yeah. But she's talked about how they, they, they went up to one time to talk. They went to the offices on the, and there's no one there. I mean, they were just like, they were all gone. They were gone. It's just like, I mean, like at the, at the, at Columbia. Right. And yeah. so it's kind of like, and so I think, and then the person who was kind of like got assigned to them for the movie could care. I mean, obviously didn't think what they were doing was like that great. And, uh, and then they were putting all their hopes in on um, yep. all Jamie. the money, all the, all the money went on, on, on the movie. Perfect. I've well, we got a call out in the list there. It said special thanks. And then after a few things it said, uh, James Brown, James Brown. Yep. So it's just like I said, so supposedly they, they, so they didn't put any money like Columbia didn't didn't put any money at all on marketing or anything for them. Yeah. And you know, which is a shame. Um, so luckily, you know, by but one thing that um another cool trivia fact, Joyce Heiser said she was like after this movie was over with, she says so some years later she was at she was at a dinner party with the the president at the time of HBO and it was at his house and at dinner party. And he told her, he goes really love just one of the guys. And let me tell you, it's the most requested movie that we get at HBO. Uh -huh. And she could, I mean, and she said, she says, that's when she knew she goes really just one. I mean, she goes, yes, just one of the guys the most requested movie that we have. And, so. Uh, I don't know what year that was. She didn't say, but it was like definitely after it had been out for a while. Uh, yeah. But he said that he, you know, that was, um, thought that was kind of neat. Yep. Yep. Well, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting back then. It's like that people would ask, actually contact HBO to request movies. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, but I guess there's somehow another, I guess that some people, I guess, really took it. You know, I'm. I, I never did, but doesn't mean other people didn't take it. Didn't. I. I don't have. I don't know how they would have done that back then, but I guess. But that's what he said. It's must request a movie they they would get. So, I guess people would call. I don't know. If they called in or. What I don't have that. I don't how that happened. Yeah. But that's what that's what she said, and the, that was at the thirtieth, anniversary screening, of the movie. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and supposedly, even though even though this only made like a said eleven million or something, it did really well overseas, and so it, and I did really well on 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 HBO and cable box offices. Yeah, okay, so. yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, rental and cable, you know, presence. Yeah, I think that's really what put it over the top. Yeah, I had a post and I, I couldn't find it on Facebook, but a guy said, I'm, I, when I, one of the things that I was doing for the previews of this, like when I put it out and he said that his, one of his former bosses was in, was in this movie. And I was trying to remember, trying to find the post where the guy wrote it. I couldn't find it, but uh, yeah, this was good. I mean, this, this was, um, this movie, we you know we talk about some movies just don't. How much I enjoyed Iron Eagle as a you know 14, 15 year old, you know, uh, I can say I enjoyed just one of the guys more. So it's it's definitely enjoyable, um, you know, on a lot of levels. Uh, it's funny, but it's also um, you get a lot of '80s fashion, which is cool. But yeah. uh, but like and I don't know I, I guess it's it's the it's the William Shakespeare you know the story you know she's one of the guys or just one of the guys or she's the man you know like you know they they're still doing the story I mean and they'll probably do this story again in some form or fashion. My memories of of it when it came out I mean I, I remembered it kind of I remember when it came out originally. And I didn't see it in the theaters uh, at the time. I don't remember why. I think part of it was, I guess, by the time I had a chance to go see it, it had already gone out of the theaters. But it did well. 
And then of course, once it got to video rentals and cable, within a few years, it had made over $90 million worldwide for something that was made for 5 million, roughly. It definitely was a hit. Um, Oh man, I've heard the director talk about, she says it made money for them and it stayed, it had, she said it had staying power. It stayed, she said it stayed in the theater for a long time. Like it was still playing in a lot of theaters. Like for, I don't know. So it was in what well, was released in April. Is that right? Yeah, I, think I think it was released in April and she says it was still playing. She, I remember her saying, I think I'm correct on this. I think she said it was still playing in November. Huh. Uh, so it's like it was still in theaters so it's like it, it so it so it had some staying power um even though it you know like it may not have brought in you know 50 60 70 million dollars or anything it's just but it had a you know it must have had a little bit of a following of some kind there there was something i just came across here that i thought was interesting um that the final scene there was some criticism that the final scene with Rick and Terry just seemed a little off kilter in comparison to the rest of the film. And Joyce Heiser said that, yeah, they shot that ending months after they had filmed, finished filming the rest of the movie. Uh, and so they, it was on the back lot. He had a different ending that they shot originally where um, Terry's uh, walking across a soccer field and Clayton like tackles her or something. I don't know, something like that. But Jeff Franklin, one of the writers, by that time, I think Full House was gearing up or, or anyway, he was doing something on television and had gotten, his status had kind of gone up some since they filmed. And so Columbia listened to him and they were like, yeah, let's reshoot that ending. So um, he managed, apparently he talked them into reshooting it is from what I'm reading here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I mean, it's fine. I just like the motorcycle thing. Don't make any. Don't doesn't make any. Yeah, that is a weird kind of. You know, it's like it's it's not like you need to prove anymore that he's, you know, that he's a you know that he's going to get lucky or he's a ladies' man or anything else. It it didn't add anything to the story by having the girl on the bike come get them yeah i'm with you and so yeah that, that must have been i mean there you go you're correct it it did have a it did have a studio back lot feel to it and it, yeah that probably was it probably exactly that was it was probably in la um, yeah i'm sure it was a client i'm sure it was at the studios so which i've done the which i've done the back lots i've done this the studio tour of columbia so i've probably seen it i just don't remember seeing it it's possible so I'm seeing a couple of little tidbits here. I, I didn't see when I did my first round of research. So um, Sherilyn Fenn was quoted as saying that she thought, she really thought that Joyce made a cute boy. And she's like, he's, she's actually cute as a boy. Like, you know, she's totally, she said, instead of, she said it was sweet. Instead of making Friday the 13th part eight or whatever, I was making the girl meets boy, girl meets girl dressed as boy movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing and you may have come across this too, is that Jennifer Jason Lee was, was up for the lead. Was yeah. up for the lead role. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I like, cool. I like Jennifer Jason Lee. I think she's a terrific actor, uh, but I have a hard time picturing her. I mean, I'm sure she could have done a great job. She would have done a great job, but I, I have a hard time picturing her having that kind of energy as a guy, you know, but you know, I mean, she's. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, sometimes you just, there, you know, there's a reason. And I, I read somewhere that, that um, you know, Joy says she was a little worried when she saw that Jennifer Jason Lee was up for it. But because she had lost a, a lost a role to her, and I've kind of wondered what that role was, but um, she I don't think she said, but it just yeah. But no, I think you, you know sometimes you're the it's the right. Yeah, well, I know you know you we mentioned the sequel uh, a little while ago, and and I know that Joyce has gone into more writing and producing kind of work, you know, aside from the the work that she does with her the camp that she and her husband run. Um, 
but apparently, you know, Lisa said that the idea Joyce had for the sequel was really, really good one. So who knows? I mean, uh, it's, uh, maybe it'll come back around in some way. And that was just one of the guys. Thanks for watching with us. Join us next week when we go from the high school senior prom to the blue skies in the Tom Cruise 80s classic, Top Gun. For more about 80s movies and music, check out Garrett's channel on YouTube, All Things 80s with Garrett, and follow him on Instagram at All Things 80s with Garrett. The Midnight Movie Snack Podcast also posts its episodes on YouTube, and we're also on Instagram at The Midnight Movie Snack Podcast. Follow us for updates, trivia, and more. Support for the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast comes from monthly donations made by listeners like you. Your small donations add up to help us continue to make fun episodes about the movies we all love. To learn more about how you can support the podcast, check out the support link in the show notes. Until next time, thanks for hanging out with us, watching the movie, and listening to our commentary. Adios. Adios.